Welcome to the Rustic Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 7525 smothering oil insect spray. We're going to make it in a mason jar. Any container works. We're going to make it like this because all you have to do for the whole season is come to this jar, measure up a gallon or a quart sprayer, and use it. You don't have to keep taking all these ingredients out and making it gallon per gallon through the season. We're going to just do it in a mason jar. When you shake it all together, it turns white. This is three parts oil one part dish soap or soap. I'm going to explain soaps because it's really important. And it's basically in a tablespoon you get 75% oil, 25% soap. This is what you use for your spray. Now this is a smothering oil insect spray, which means you want the oil dispersed through the water. If you're using a quart sprayer or a gallon sprayer. So that when you spray the leaves, a fine layer of oil covers the leaf. Oil will cover eggs, it will cover soft bodied insects. And what this really does is it smothers the eggs. It closes the holes in insects where they breathe, so it smothers the insects and it messes up the oxygen exchange for the eggs, so it in theory also smothers the eggs. It's really, really effective. It's been used for really centuries. Follow me. I will link in the DIY playlist with all the DIY sprays that I'm using and creating this year. Also, please check out my blog because I will put all the recipes and details in my blog, the Rusted Garden Journal. That's in the video description too. This way you don't have to take notes. I will put this here real quick, but this is basically the information that I'm going over if you want to freeze it and take a look at it. I also put this at the end of the video. But there's a lot of ways to get all the details without having to take notes. So I like using the smothering oil insect spray because it's really effective and typically it's mild. Couple of things. Soap. You have pure soap, like the Castile type soaps that are just soap. I use that pretty much in most of my recipes. It's mild. It doesn't do a lot of damage to leaves. You're also going to have to test spray. I'll talk about that in a second. Then you get something like this. Uh, this is a mild to strong soap. It's called dish detergent, dish soap. Not a lot of degreasers in here, fairly mild. You want to look for something like this. If you go to the heavier detergent soaps, this is a super detergent. Some of them are concentrated. You can just over concentrate your mix with soap. When you spray that soap concentration and the oil combined damages the leaves. So when you're making this, even though this works 100% of the time for me, I want you to test spray and we'll be talking about that. It doesn't really matter which soap you use. What matters is the ratio that you mix the ingredients into the sprayer. And we'll talk about that in a second. So you have pure soaps like Castile. Those are the friendliest and simplest and least damaging. Then you have some, kind of the mild to strong soaps like this basic ivory. And then you have harsher soaps like this Ajax with degreasers in there. You can use whatever you want. The term soap, detergents, and degreasers are used interchangeably. You can't find what's really in these. So you can't just go by the word soap. You have to know the product. That's why you're going to test spray. That's why I'm not going to tell you to use a specific brand because the brands vary garden to garden to garden, you know, across the world. All right. So it's pretty much straightforward. We're going to use any vegetable oil, whatever oil you want to use is fine. All oils can be used as a smothering oil. We're going to keep the ratio three to one. Three parts oil, let me move this out of the way, one part soap, or a 75%, 25% smothering oil spray. 75% oil, 25% soap. And again, the soap is just being used to disperse the oil through the water. And I really recommend making it this way, because then you just measure it out from here, put it into whatever sprayer you're using, and you don't have to keep taking all this stuff out. Just wanted to clarify that today we are making a smothering oil spray and of course it has soap in there and that soap does damage soft bodied insects. I also make a separate soapy water spray, no oil, because sometimes when you add oil and soap to a leaf it does more damage because you have two different things going on there. So I do make a clean soapy water spray, more soap and I find sometimes I well, I do add some detergent in there. I find sometimes the insect 
is damaged more by having some degreaser in there. But that's a whole different video. So we're really concentrating on the smothering effect of oil. Oil can also be used to cover fungus and it shuts down how fungus reproduces, but it's not as effective as some other ways to control fungus on your plants. So the three to one ratio, we're gonna go by half a cup. So we're gonna use one and a half, maybe I'll make sure I can see this. One and a half cups of vegetable oil. So it's a half a cup, half a cup, half a cup, one and a half cups. That's three parts vegetable oil. Any jar works. Pour it right into the jar. Probably in this video, the biggest tip is really pre-making a lot of the oils that can sit. And this can sit for a whole season. Then you're going to use a half a cup of soap. And that could be any of the soaps that I mentioned. Using this, I would use a little more dosing in a gallon of water. Maybe I would use three tablespoons, just for an example of this. If I'm using the degreaser, then maybe I only use one and a half tablespoon. You do get less oil, but you just want to be careful with the soap. If you're able to, something you know, more mild like this or Castile is the, is the best. And when you're test spraying, you're basically mixing up a batch in a quart sprayer. I'll go over the ratios. And you spray a couple of leaves. You wait 48 hours to see if there's any damage. You also then test it to see if it's killing the insects. And you start at the lowest dose in a quart of water, which would be one teaspoon. Then you can move to two teaspoons. And then you can move to three teaspoons. You just want to be consistent with how you make this. And then you'll figure out the right ratio. And then in there, a half a cup of soap. And you simply mix it together and you have your 7525 smothering oil insect spray. And you would just give this a quick shake every time you go to use it. So I know that sometimes this is hard to see because of the contrast on the camera, but I really want to recommend that you test spray your garden plants. A tomato leaf is not as strong as a cabbage leaf. So you also want to test spray on different plants. Now, here's an example. On a gallon of water, one to two tablespoons of pure soap, the Castile types, rarely harms plant leaves. You still have to test spray. One to two tablespoons of the harsh soap, like the concentrated or soap the greasers, can damage plants pretty regularly. Maybe not the cabbage leaf, maybe not the kale leaf, but it's gonna damage pepper leaves or tomato leaves. So you're really paying attention to the soap that you select. All right, let's go to the basic recipes. That's the mix we already did. And then right in here, it's two to three teaspoons of this mix into a quart of, wa into a quart of water or one and a half tablespoons to three tablespoons into a gallon of water. And just so you know, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. If you can't see this, it is on the blog. And that's really the, the most important thing is understanding how to use this. Now, a lot of recipes you might see is like, you know, a gallon of water, two tablespoons of oil, one tablespoon of soap, and that works very often. But as you vary the types of soaps, it can cause damage, and I know this is the fourth time I'm stressing, you want a test spray. The oil sprays, the smothering oil sprays are wonderful. They're really effective. They work on the soft-bodied insects, small eggs. If you have an infestation, maybe you want to do this every, say, three to five days to make sure you're coating the eggs and the insects, killing them off. It does take a couple of days to work because you're smothering them. If you're using it as prevention, every 10 to 14 days, covering your leaves, top side, underside is really, really effective too. And it's gonna vary. Like, I find that white flies are much more difficult. I might spray this when there's an infestation every three days to get them under control. Aphids, maybe every five to seven days. So that's really gonna vary. But this is your basic oil spray for smothering insects and smothering eggs, so to speak. When you take a tablespoon of this out to mix, it's 75% oil, remember, 
25% soap. And let me just go over the usage ratios one more time. Two to three teaspoons per quart of water. And you can start with one teaspoon in a quart, quart of water, spray, see how it goes, then up to two teaspoons per quart, you know, quart of water, and then up to three teaspoons per quart of water. And you're gradually increasing the strength of your spray, checking to see if it does damage to your plants. And you want that balance where it maximizes killing off eggs and insects, but does little to no damage to your plants. If you're putting this into a gallon, it's one and a half tablespoons to three tablespoons. And you can, again, work your way up. And just for reference, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. I really like doing it this way because I can just keep this in the house, grab it, make the mixture that I need, put it away. I don't have to keep taking out the oils and the sprays. And you can use this kind of in a concentrate form to make as little or as much as you want where you're not having excess, you know, gallons of spray sitting around. This will make, I don't know, easily, what, 15, 20 gallons of spray or something like that. I highly recommend trying this out. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll be doing a whole series on different DIY sprays that you can make. You can also find all the information you need at my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And I'm going to say it again, test spray. Once you have a spray that works, write the recipe down, stick with it, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.